Tonight, my friends, we have yet again more big deadline day updates involving a Simhen Sancho, as well as us dissecting what Maresca had to say after tonight's 2 1 defeat against Servette. So, I hope you guys enjoy the video, share your thoughts and opinions, and of course, if you're liking the look of the third away kit, you guys know what to do. Card above, description below, use my code NINI10 at checkout to get 10% off your final order. So, now that that's out of the way, Let's now break down this news. We start things off by discussing what Maresca had to say. After tonight, we secured qualification into the group stages of the Europa Conference League. Now tomorrow, we will learn exactly who we're set to play against. We of course are seeded in Port 1. So I'm really excited to see the opposition we may get. I think the Conference League is a great opportunity for fans especially fans who are traveling to these games to visit different European cities, play against an opposition that you never really ever play against and of course complete the objective which for me is winning the Conference League which means that we've won basically every single European trophy. Not many clubs can say they've done that, this at least gives us a major opportunity. So let's go to the press conference and Maraska said after the game, listen, we had the chance to score maybe three or four chances in that first half and then if we had, the game would have ended 2-0 but they scored a goal, we then suffered a bit and as he said yesterday, he was actually worried about Servet's threat because he knew that this was set to be their biggest game of the season. He knew the conditions weren't going to be great. It's a hot stadium, rowdy crowds and the pitch of course wasn't very optimum whatsoever. So in a sense, it's pretty positive that no players got any injuries in this game today. When Nico went down, I was getting a little bit worried, but thank God no one suffered on the pitch today. And it seemed like Maresca was kind of thinking about the bigger picture at hand because the most important thing was basically just securing qualification. He didn't really care how we did that as long as we actually got that done. He said that in the end, we deserve to go through. So he was happy about that. But he did also reveal again that sometimes when things are going against us, we do lose a bit of confidence, as we did see for the equalising goal that Servet scored against us. Still, was tonight's defeat a reminder that we're said to be the team that everyone in the Conference League wants to beat and sees as their biggest threat? I think that's a very fair comment and statement. Teams will raise their game against us and I think the Servet game was a little bit of a glimpse and taster of things that are set to come our way. But regardless though, he reiterated the fact that in the first 30 minutes, he was impressed. And to be honest, I think I could kind of see that because I felt like the team were moving the ball with a bit more purposefulness in the start of the game. The tempo was pretty decent. We moved Servette from left to right, back and forth, and they had no chances against us. They had no threat. And to be honest, there were moments there where if we were a bit more clinical, we could have found more possibilities to score another goal and really kill this game off. Still though, in terms of aspirations in the Conference League, Maresca remains coy on all our objectives this season. Now, as a fan base, we're all expecting us to easily win this tournament. If we don't, there will be serious questions at hand, but it seems that Maresca at this stage doesn't want to put any unnecessary pressure on his team whatsoever. And instead, Maresca just wants to see us perform well, which I think might not be exciting, might be a bit boring, but probably is the most responsible thing to say when the team is still trying to figure out and get used to this way of playing, right? But to end things, of course, he had some positive words to say towards Tyree George, mentioning the fact that, listen, the kid played with personality, was not shy, and he looked comfortable in the field. And I think that is definitely fair praise for Maresca because it did seem like Tyree George wanted to express himself on the field today. And listen, he wants to make the moments that come his way. Maresca said that it was a shame that Action Pong and uh, McMahon didn't get any chances to play today, which is fair. Hopefully they find opportunities in the Conference League this season, but my friends, that was pretty much a press conference from Enzo Maresca. You know, not too disappointed. I think he's focusing on the positives at play. And if anything now, I think now the big test will come back in the Premier League against Crystal Palace when we have Felix, Neto, Gusto, and all the big guys coming back with their top form. Now, my friends, let's discuss the latest transfer updates surrounding Sancho and Asimhen. We start with Jaden Sancho first. Now, Romano mentioned that currently, the deal has stalled between Juventus and Man United as they try to strike a deal. But then maybe five minutes after that post came out, the Marzio came out to say that 
listen, negotiations are now over. Juventus feel that they have a very promising winger in Mangula, who's showing some great promise under uh, Thiago Mota for the start of this season. And they feel like if they were to pursue Jaden Sancho, that could take away valuable minutes for their young winger. I get it, but equally, we know that the real reason is that Juventus and Man United couldn't find the right financial agreements that satisfy both parties. Now, it does seem like Man United really want to get rid of Jaden Sancho. He's earning around 300,000 a week. And it seemed like they were even willing to give Sancho on loan to Juventus without any obligations to buy. But in the end, it seemed like his wages were too prohibitive as Man United wanted more money up front for Juventus to cover his wages and they weren't willing to do something like that. Now, I think today, both parties were relying on the fact that Chiesa was set to sign for Liverpool, as well as Juventus very close down to finding moves for Arsa Melo and Kostic. But even though those sales could have generated more money for Juventus to be able to strike a deal for Sancho, it seems like maybe the finances are just too much for them that it's not deemed responsible. And to be fair, they've signed Constant Zhao, they've signed Gonzalez, they have other wide options there in the meantime. So maybe this is the most responsible way for Juventus to move surrounding this deal. So this now gives us an opportunity because as we've learned from yesterday, Sancho ideally is open to the move to us. Now, could he have been storing things parsley as well, waiting for us to find the right proposal with Manchester United? That would be a big thing to see. But it does seem like things are going to heat up right now. And now that the window is set to close tomorrow, by 11 p.m., I'm sure that some clubs may be forced into deals they weren't originally too keen on maybe a week or month ago, but now times are different and getting guarantees is the key thing right now. Now, we look to see how we actually strike this deal down. Sky Sports revealed earlier this afternoon that we may even entertain signing him on a permanent deal, which is pretty mad. And are we considering that? Because that may involve Raheem Sterling then moving to Manchester United. I think this is a good time to discuss the latest updates surrounding Raheem Sterling because it came out this evening from the Times that we have offered Sterling to Arsenal. That is pretty interesting. Now, Arteta a week ago was in praise of the winger and currently Arsenal are looking for the type of wide forward player that can play across different attacking positions to add to their squad. We know that Arteta likes that profile of player. And Raheem Sterling could be an interesting player to turn to as he doesn't have to relocate to a different part of the country. He's already pretty settled in London. And obviously you can rely upon a guaranteed level of experience and quality for him to add to the squad. Let's see what happens there. But going back to Sterling and Manchester United, of course, talks are still currently surrounding both players making separate moves, but obviously everything working out in a combined manner. Strike an agreement to sign Sancho on loan or whatever. And if they had done so, they may not have turned towards Raheem Sterling. But now that it's very key for Sancho now to get off that wage loan to be sold, they're gonna do what they can. Could they now be open to maybe exploring a possibility now to really find a way to take Raheem Sterling off our hands? Because it seems that Sterling is open to Man United. Sancho is definitely open to signing for us. We're going to see a lot of things twisting and turning in this next 24 hours. And then after that, my friends, the window is over. So let's see what happens. But currently, things are looking pretty promising when it comes to Jaden Sancho signing for us. And you know what? I've got some opinions on this, but I want you guys to leave your opinions in the comments below. Do you feel like it's a bit too greedy right now to be going for a Jaden Sancho? Do you see the sense behind it? Or do you feel like this is a smart move to make? And actually taking him away from Man United could be key to rejuvenating this guy's ability again. And we're the best club to bring him back to form. Let us know below. Now we turn towards Victor Asimhen, my friends, because this is now just coming from Romano. But I guess finally, after all the speculation over the past days, weeks, and even months suggesting that we may make a loan offer that includes an obligation to buy. Well, the news tonight is our first official offer for a cement. The first official offer is in fact a loan with an obligation to buy for an undisclosed amount of money. And now we wait to see what happens. Now, as we know, we've sent management to Napoli to try and broker a deal. Now, our directors and owners were in Servet today 
there's different people who are part of that management. Could that be Joe Shields? Could that include other people at the club? Most likely, yeah. We wait to see what happens there. But as we know, Victor Simhen, of course, ideally prefers to sign for us. But finding agreement in terms of his finances has been the most prohibitive thing that we are still awaiting more clarity and answers to. Now, we know that in Saudi Arabia, they feel pretty confident that Al Ali are close now to signing Victor Simhen. They've offered him 120 million over four years and they've been in Naples as well to strike and broker that deal too. They can offer guaranteed money up front. You'd imagine that ideally, Napoli would prefer to sell straight to Saudi Arabia, but obviously a Simhan still has ambitions for Europe and that's what he's still waiting to explore. His only way to remain in Europe right now falls on our hands unless another club out from nowhere makes some spectacular 11th hour move, but that's gonna be quite complicated at this point in time. Now we're hearing some rumors coming out now from Nigerian media. They report that we've actually agreed a 350,000 per week Euro deal with Victor Asimhen. Now that's a lot of money. I think that's kind of around like 300,000 a week or something of that matter. So it's massive money, massive wages. But as we've known, Victor today has been awaiting to see how we react after him and his team have essentially said yes to this potential move to Al Ali. Now Al Ali aren't resting entirely on Victor Asimhen. He's their main number one, but if we find a deal because they know their second favorites for him, well, today they have agreed a 17 million pound a season deal over the next three years with Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony is currently awaiting to see how the development surrounding Asimhen actually ends. But even if he wasn't to technically sign for Al Ali, obviously he could probably sign for another Saudi club because all Saudi teams have access to the central fund. That's how these deals work in that country. So it does seem like whoever fails for Asimhen is set to sign the second best in Ivan Tony. Some fans feel like maybe it's more responsible to go for a Tony of course a lot less money who has Prem experience and could play more of that, you know, competition role because some believe that Nico Jackson may come big, but maybe that's the most responsible way to maybe manage our situation right now. But obviously, but under this ownership, as we've known for time now, when there's an opportunity to sign your number one target, we will explore every single possibility to make that happen. So I don't see why we would give up on the Simhan unless we really, really can't find this uh, wage agreement for the player. But my thing is the fact that news is coming out that we are now making an official offer for a Simhan, that gives me some confidence because I could have sworn reports have mentioned that we want to get the agreement first verbally with the player before making any official offers. The fact that we are coming in with a loan with an obligation must mean that negotiations are successful and a Simhan has said yes to signing for us because otherwise, why are we doing this outside of it being pure desperation? But we don't do anything out of desperation because we have other targets of plan B and plan C in case this move does fail. And worst comes to worst, we just keep what we have and we go again in January or the following summer. So I'm feeling pretty optimistic around this news, especially considering the timing of this news coming out right now, because again, why would we be making this offer of a loan and obligation when we knew that a Simhen had said no to that in the past. So clearly, this must imply a Simhen and his team have changed their mind. And maybe this implies too that we've made a better financial offer. And maybe it implies other deals like our growing confidence and letting go of Starling and others. Time will tell and I'm sure we'll get all the final answers within the next 24 hours, my friends. So my friends, right now, that's all the latest stories coming out. Of course, stay with me tomorrow. I'm gonna have live streams out, Q and A's, as well as more videos covering everything deadline day. So I hope you guys enjoy. Hit that like button, share your thoughts and opinions, and I will see you all tomorrow. Cool.